What's up? I'm Derek Kirk, back to Tron, and today we're going to take a look at the SSS or the Subsurface Scattering tab inside of the RS Standard Material. Subsurface Scattering is going to be your best friend if you're trying to make something waxy because it's one of those things that kind of like transmission and stuff like that, except it kind of just only has the kind of light control and the way it works is with light is going to be more accurate to kind of wax and stuff like that. Again, I've got 20 wax materials to give away for free. A lot of them are kind of just standard things that I thought would be helpful uh, when trying to do a lot of arc viz and stuff. Like you've got a lot of candles and things you're seeing. You know, you got Christmas scenes. You got to have that green candle. Just a lot of different good jumping off points for the RS standard material SSS feature. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG Shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift, so be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. So we just have a cylinder here and we've just kind of extruded the top of it down and we've put a little Redshift light in here. We have a little environment and stuff on. We have some other lights and lighting and everything is going to be very important for subsurface scattering. As we check out this, this looks when we render it, we'll see we have this nice glow from where how this is thinner here. It looks like a candle. Uh, we've got the, that light, that warm light from that little tiny light inside. It's really coming through where it's thinner and it's not coming through where it's thicker. And this is exactly what subsurface scattering is for. It's for creating these really nice waxy substances. They kind of uh, kill off light and react with light in a nice way that gives it this nice uh, look. Now, I will say first right off the bat, if you want to use this for skin, um, I wouldn't. Uh, there's an, there is a skin material that's like fantastic for skin already. It's just called skin. And uh, this works like amazing. It has three different layers and another single scattering control. This I have a lesson on this in my Redshift Master class. It's fantastic. But so basically for this, the way the subsurface scattering works is if we go inside of our material here, the base color doesn't matter. We can make this whatever. The base color is not going to affect the color of your object once you enable the weight up to one for the SSS. Everything you're gonna to need to control is gonna be your roughness, which is here in your reflection, as always. And then we want to mess with these subsurface settings down here. So this is where our color is being driven here. And the reason we have this kind of like just slightly yellow color, and that's for this candle wax type look, because we're gonna have that color of our orange light kind of pour through and kind of create this nice color look. And you can see we've got some roughness on this and it just looks like a really nice wax candle. And then we have the weight, which we have up all the way to one, lower that down, obviously zero, we're not going to have it, but we lower that down and we're going to see less and less of that light kind of scatter evenly throughout our object. So this is just kind of, you know, dimming the whole effect down. So there's sometimes you could use that, but most of the time, if you're going to use subsurface for this kind of wax or something, you're probably going to have your weight all the way up to one. Next we have the radius, and this is interesting because the radius you think normally is a value, but in this it's a color. And this is where it gets kind of confusing. Now the radius works in conjunction with the scale. And the way the radius works is if we have it set to white, it is going to allow just whatever color light is coming in, that's what color is going to go through. It's not going to multiply that color by anything but white. So if we have a light coming through that's gold like this, we're gonna have that gold effect. Now, if I come in here and I change this to black, we're gonna lose that. It's gonna say, well, I'm gonna multiply that by black and that's gonna kill off our light. Now, the confusing part is when you start adding colors and things into this. Like right now, that makes pretty good sense. So we'll turn it back to white and we'll talk about the scale real quick before we start messing with the colors of the radius. So the scale is kind of like an intensity multiplier rather than using the weight because you want it to have this waxy look. The scale is going to control how much the radius amplifies that light. So if I crank this up to 20, we're going to get that light scattering throughout our whole wax object here a lot more. And we crank that down real low. We're going to have it have a hard time getting through our surface here. So if we go a little lower, you'll see we only have it where it's thin and then we have it very soft. So you can control like the intensity of that rather than controlling the intensity of your light or something like that. You can control the intensity of your subsurface so that your stuff isn't coming in. So if you get your lights set how you want them, but then it looks like your candle's too, too glowy for how low light it is, you can just lower the scale and that will kill off how that light's pouring through your object and control that. 
And if it's not coming through enough, crank it up. And so if you crank it up too high, you're just gonna lose kind of that whole effect and it's just gonna be left with this kind of weird, weird thing. <laughs> so let's keep that in mind. We'll go back and talk about colors here in just one second. First, I wanna cover the mode options here. We have ray trace diffusion and we have point based diffusion. Ray trace is obviously gonna use like a ray trace card kind of thing and it's going to be a lot more accurate and it's still really fast, but this is one of the few cases I believe where point base is actually gonna be faster than ray trace. I feel like normally when you hear ray trace, you're like faster and better. Uh, but point base is actually pretty fast. Uh, it's not quite as accurate, but it still does a really good job. So if you think you can get away with using point base over ray trace uh, for your render, you should definitely give that a go. And then you have your samples, default 64, this slider probably goes to a billion. Um, so just you can adjust that as you need more samples means a cleaner image Then we'll take a look at the include mode here in a minute now real quick before we talk about this radius and colors I just want to show kind of the importance of Light and stuff when it comes to subsurface scattering So if I have my area light here, you see my intensity is up to 100. And I have it kind of animated where it flickers and stuff Which is pretty cool, but if we take this we turn this area light off We obviously don't have that effect coming in from that and we have these other lights on and you can see if we turn all of our lights off, we're left with this kind of weird goo. We turn on a very e uh, we turn on a dome light, and you can see we have this nice look, but we're not, you know, you can't tell that this is waxy. But keep in mind, you know, if you're looking at a candle that's lit in the daytime, you're not gonna see it as well. So don't don't try to create things that you know aren't gonna make sense. But as you turn down the light, now we're left with this really nice, pretty glow. So you kind of have to have that balance. You want that kind of evening look when you have a candle. That that's going to be where the wax and stuff is going to shine. So keep that in mind. You know, don't try to force things because you can, because you can create this really nice glow with the wax. Don't try to force it into a scene that doesn't need it. And it's very easy to do. Um, you know, like you think, oh, I can make a cool wax. It'll look really neat with the light on it. And, you know, you're rendering it a daytime scene and it's just not. It's not gonna work and you don't need to try to force it in there. So just subsurface scattering has purpose. It's one of those ones that's kind of a very unique purpose when it comes to doing photorealistic things and stuff like that. But then it has a lot of cool things you can do with kind of the uh, abstract look and stuff, but just don't overthink it is basically it. Yeah, that looks really nice. Let's take a look at just another example of this and lighting. So here we have a scene, we have some cylinders in a cloner, and we have two big area lights here. This area light, we have an environment in it as well, so we have a little bit of fog going on, but we have this area light that's got the volume kind of turned down a bit, and we have the spread turned down, so it's gonna be more of a focused beam, which is gonna kind of concentrate and kind of shine through our subsurface objects a little crisper and like have those hard edges. Same with this light, the same kind of thing. We've turned down these spreads. So these are kind of very focused spotlight type beams here. And we have the same material on here. And we can tell it doesn't look like, uh, you know, a candle wax as much. And these lights are very, these lights aren't super bright, but because they're so focused, they're lighting our scene up like this. So now let's take a look at the colors here and how this is gonna work. But the cool thing is, is like you can see, that the way this is working is, you know, where those objects are closer to the light, they're getting more of the light in them. And then you have these objects that aren't getting as much light and they're just overall darker. And it's kind of a cool effect. So let's take a look at controlling the color of this. We'll change the art color to white. So now we can see how that's scattering across here. And we're gonna change our radius here. So, you think if I want the light to, if I want the color of my subsurface to be kind of this red color as the light scatters through it, I'm just going to change the radius to red. And you realize you get kind of this weird effect where it almost looks like skin here where the light's really shining through it, but then everything in the dark has turned blue, which you said, I didn't tell it to turn blue. Why is it turning blue? Well, the radius kind of works in a by color type of way. For the color, I suggest clicking this little color wheel circle and then clicking this complementary color system. So the way this is gonna work is as I click and drag this around, say I choose purple, 
you're gonna see that the other dot goes down here to green. And you can see that's exactly what we have going on in our scene. Now, this is really cool looking. So basically what we're telling it is, is when we tell it to come in with the radius and the scale of 20, we say, I want it to be blue. It's gonna say, okay, where that light's hitting this, it's gonna be blue, but where it's dark, I'm gonna put the opposite color in. And what we can do is adjust the scale. We can take our scale and turn it to, let's just say one. And you're gonna notice you still get a lot more of that blue and not as much of that yellow. So as you increase the scale, the further along this line from the opposite of our blue, you're gonna go. So kind of a weird one, uh, but you can tell you can make some really pretty things. How often are you going to use this? Not, not super often. If you're going to make wax, this is probably your best bet or like a glow in the dark type uh, material. That's probably a good bet. But if you're going to do something like honey or ketchup and stuff like that, you're still probably better off using the new transmission settings than the subsurface settings. Um, though these are really good and work really well. You can see, uh, you can create some really cool looks with this. Basically the way this one works is we have our color of our actual thing is set to blue and then our radius is purple. So we're going to get that purple and that green because our scale is up all the way to 10. So we're gonna get that purple and that green coming through and that's gonna mix with our blue and create this really pretty kind of just retro look here. So hopefully that was helpful in just kind of explaining what those controls do. Obviously, I mean, just to recap, you've got color, which is gonna adjust the color of the way the light hits your object. Then you've got radius, which is going to affect the way the color passes through your object. You've got scale, which is going to be kind of the amplitude of that radius. And you've got mode, samples, and include mode. Let's take a look at that. So include mode is kind of interesting. Here we have uh, you know, our cylinders in a, in a cloner here. And if I change it from only self, which means like each of these values, this scale and this radius is going to be based off of each of these individual objects versus the whole cloner as a whole, when we change it to all objects, it's going to react as if this is all one object. And so now we have just kind of this purple blue coming through the whole thing. So if I go in here and I lower the scale, it's all going to act very uniform. And that's kind of interesting. Here's another example. Here's our candle and we have two objects here right next to it which is our candle as well now these aren't in a cloner so we're going to see these all have the same material on it we're going to see what happens when we do the include mode switch it to all objects and when we do this you'll see that it actually lets that light pass through this object and all the way and hit all the way over here so it's kind of saying it's going to let the light affect everything as if it's one object rather than the limitations of one exact object. So not sure when you do that, unless it was for stylistically, not sure from a photorealism standpoint when you would want to do that, but obviously there's a time and a place for it or they wouldn't put it in there. So if we just put this right here, and this is another thing with subsurface materials, you could just shove a light inside of them and that's kind of a cool, like a lit from within kind of a neat effect. So if you come in here and change it back to only self, you're going to see just this one candle is going to get all that energy from this light. And these aren't going to get any of it because they're, obviously they're not going to be affected by it. But if we change it to all, it's going to disperse that energy throughout all of these and kind of give you a different look. So I don't know, most of the time you're probably going to say only self, but um, if you have ideas for when all objects would be a really cool idea, definitely let me know because I'd like to, to know when to use that. Yeah, subsurface. Interesting one. Again, just to install these materials, just like the others, be sure to check out the other ones listed. There's a link below to get all of those materials I provided. Once you download that zip file, just go inside your asset browser, go to create, go to import assets, and just click that zip file. And it's gonna go ahead and throw those in the uncategorized folder. And you simply select and drag them into wherever you want. We've got thin films, wax, metals, and uh, glass and plastics. So lots of things to go ahead and get started with this new RS standard material. All right, thanks you guys so much for watching. See you next time.